I'm glad to introduce Dr. Vanita Mehta, who is here to tell us about her career path for the APS SSCP How Did I Get Here video series. Dr. Mehta received her doctorate in clinical psychology from Teachers College Columbia University in 2004. Dr. Mehta is a clinical psychologist, journalist, and media expert based in Washington, D.C. In her private practice, she works with teens and adults. Dr. Mehta made her foray into media through a mass media fellowship sponsored by the American Association for the Advancement of Science with Dateline NBC as her host site. Upon completion of the program, she was hired by NBC News. She later held editorial positions at Discovery Studios and Nova at WGBH. Of note, she was the science editor of the acclaimed PBS special, This Emotional Life, which featured individuals struggling to overcome common psychological conditions. Dr. Mehta has provided expert commentary for various media outlets, including the Today Show, the Discovery Channel, Al Jazeera America, and the Huffington Post. She hosts a blog for Psychology Today and is currently at work on a book about relationship challenges with actionable strategies informed by an evolutionary perspective. Dr. Mehta, please describe your career path and tell us about any obstacles or barriers that you overcame along the way. In addition, tell us what has surprised you about your path and what you wish you had known earlier about your career path. Well, gosh, well, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, it's really nice to be meeting with you. And uh, I think that my career path started out probably pretty uh, typically. I you know, went to, I did my undergrad at Brandeis. I, I went on to work at a research lab after my master's. And I was, I think, att uh, attaining the usual kind of experience, clinical experience and research experience. And then I enrolled at Teachers College in the clinical program. And it was in my Last year of my doctoral program, I had applied for a science journalism fellowship, also known as the Mass Media Fellowship, that's sponsored by the American Association for the Advancement of Science, mouthful there, um, and I was just thrilled. I, I got it, and I got my first choice, which was Dateline NBC. They actually had a psychology unit, so it was a great match. And I, I went there, they specifically wanted somebody to help generate psych, uh, psychology-based stories. And so it, it just so happened that at the time that I was there was when there was that big, uh, when Michael Jackson had been accused of molestation for a second time. And so I pitched a story actually on how could it be that these different agencies had arrived at different conclusions in his case. And you know, how is it that different professionals could actually arrive you know, to say that different things had happened? And uh, NBC liked the story, and they went ahead with it, and they said, you know what, we really like what you're pitching. Would you like to work here? And I said, well, this isn't, this isn't going to happen again. <laughs> so I worked, on my, I, I worked at NBC. I took the job, and I worked there during the day, and I worked on my dissertation at night. And then I graduated, and then I just continued on. And then from there, I was at, uh, so then I went on, at, and from NBC, I went on to, uh, to Nova, and also in New York City, in their New York City office. I was there for about two and a half years, working on a variety of projects, Nova Science Now, which actually took me away, f actually, a bit from psychology. I had a you know, the wonderful opportunity to learn about um, human behavior from the, perspective, the perspectives of evolution, neuroscience, genetics, the things that really, you know, kind, you know, push the boundaries of my knowledge beyond what I learned in my doctoral program. It was very exciting because this was 2005, 2006, rather, when I took the job. And if you remember, the genome had been cracked in 2003. So there was just an explosion of research. Really exciting time to learn more about human behavior. And then, you know, my positions just kind of uh, kept on going from there. And, uh, yeah, but I would say that something that I wish I had known <laughs> um, go along the way is I wish I had known when I was in graduate school that there was so much more that you could do with a PhD other than being a clinician or a, uh, going into academia. I mean, being here in D.C., actually, what's really interesting to see is a lot, you'll see a lot of people with PhDs, um, working in science communications or working at think tanks. A lot of people with PhDs who are program officers for nonprofits. There are all kinds of things that you can do. And yet, uh, when, I think when you're in the bubble of a graduate program, you kind of think, okay, 
is it clinical or is it research? And that's pretty much it, but there's just so much more out there. So, uh, so is there any, I'm not sure where else to expand here. Yeah, that, that sounds good. Can you tell us a little bit about how you initially got interested in pursuing media, since as you said, it's not a typical path offered to graduate students? Sure. Well, I think that the, the I, I think I always was very interested in writing and uh, crafting stories. I had actually considered uh, pursuing journalism as a career, but I really wanted to, I really wanted to um, study at a, just at a higher level. I think that really kind of sinking my teeth into um, academia was really important to me. And so I just felt that, you know, getting a doctorate was just something I really wanted to do. And then that would just open up other doors. But I think that the commonality here um, is that in, when you practice psychotherapy and when you're writing a narrative, it, it, the, the commonality is narrative, a patient's narrative, or you know the narrative of the story of when I worked at Nova, the science was actually the star, not the scientist. Um, so when you kind of craft a narrative, you know what is the story that's being told? And um, you know in therapy, you know one view of it is that is to help the patient rewrite a story. So I think that there's just a lot of ways that we can look at you know the presentation of story, the crafting of story, how to change a story. Um, I, I think that that's probably the commonality for me. Can you, can you tell us about your experience on This Emotional Life? Sure. That was a lot of fun. I, I don't know if you know, but it was, Dan Gilbert was the host. He's just, a, a, just a, the nicest guy you'll ever meet. He really, he really is. And um, obviously such an incredible uh, mind and just, an ex, just very excited about life. So I was there to, um, to basically help carve out what it was. First of all, I, I helped on the funding side to help raise the funding, which is actually another thing that graduate students have a, we really, be, we have a lot of experience in doing that and that's a very translatable skill. And so um, I helped to raise the money for the series and then I was on the editorial team that helped carve out what it was we were actually going to cover. And so we were, you know, we would literally look at what the prevalence rates, you know, what are, you know, what are people really coping with, you know, so depression, anxiety, marriage troubles, you know, what psychosocial stressors were going to be the most common because we wanted to be able to reach as many, we wanted to help as many people as we could with, with that effort. And, um, and so, yeah, so it was, a, you know, one of the things that, the, you know, the challenge there was how to take a, you know, a person's struggle and, for, you know, basically format it for television. That's always, that was the struggle. You know, that's, if you're in science communications, that's kind of always the struggle if you're going to be working with the medium of television. So, you know, how, are, how could we best... Uh, how can we best make the uh, person's story relatable for the viewer? And then again, you know, what tools could we offer? So that was a, that was a really exciting program to be on because I felt like I could, I could help from so many different, in so many different ways. My, my training really did prepare me very well for that, for that opportunity. Can you tell us about how you arrived sort of at what you're doing currently, which is um, private practice as well as writing? We'd love to hear about how, how about that path to what, to what you're doing now. So, so yeah, so I, I made a bit of a shift. Uh, what I was finding was that the big, you know, those wonderful programs like This Emotional Life were becoming, you know, the, the taste of, of uh, the, the American television viewer has radically changed, uh, you know, since I started. And um, I think that you know, it was a couple of things. You know, part of it was the television landscape changing, and I think also part of it was my interests changing as well. Um, wanting to, what I really li love about my career right now is that I get to work on all levels. So I get to work on the individual level. My blog is sort of like a mid level, and then when I engage in television, that's sort of a mass level. And it's so satisfying to be able to work at all of these scales. And when I worked in television, it was always the mass scale, and I did miss working more individually and more, you know, I guess you could use the word intimately with my patients, um, that, that to be able to really be able to touch an individual person's experience and help a, a single person and just help make their life better and more meaningful. So that's what I really love about my career now is that I get to engage at all levels and um, apply my knowledge and uh, 
in support and you know whatever you know whatever else I can give in these different ways. Do you recall particular obstacles or barriers that you uh, had to sort of overcome to get to to reach your goals and and pursue your interests? Oh gosh, that's such an interesting question. I mean, I think that in some ways. Um, I think that it was myself I had to overcome in some ways. I think that for, I think I really had to build the confidence in myself to do something different. And that what that the path that I was choosing was I, I don't I don't know anybody else from my program at least that who I, somebody else has written a book, a few somebody else's have written books. But to go ahead and actually work at, for a news organization or a television organization that I don't think that I, I don't know of anyone from my program who's done that. So I think that for me, I really had to become more comfortable with the decision that I made and that I, you know, learning a whole new set of politics and how things work and what you need to do to advance. I had to learn all of that for a whole other industry. And so, you know, you know, you can do it, but I think that just being comfortable with my own choice and then also having to just learn, okay, if I want to make it in this field, what is it going to take? On that note, do you have any particular advice for graduate students who may be thinking about pursuing a career in media use with their psychology degree? I would say you know, what's wonderful about journalism is you can always jump right in. You can just pitch editors uh, and if there's something that's happening in the news and you have an interesting psychological take on it, you could just go ahead and pitch an editor at any outlet and you can just jump right in. You don't necessarily, it's nice to work under the aegis of a fellowship, um, but, you, but it's something where you can just uh, throw yourself right into the fray if you want to. Terrific. Thank you so much, Dr. Mato. We really appreciate hearing about your career path. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you.